Hi everyone, William Weiser is here. Because this upcoming Tuesday will be exactly one year since I started doing these message videos that are mostly about our movie that we're making next year, I've decided that tonight, even though it's two days early, I'll give you a little early one year anniversary message video. And once again, I have 10 different things, well, more than 10 things, written down here. And I'm going to let you in on the first thing, which is another anniversary. It's an anniversary of something good that happened to me that has to do with a certain place. And since then, it has not happened the way that I wanted to it to happen since then. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's what I'm talking about. Number one. Me going back to the old church for Heroes Camp this year. I got told uh, earlier this month that this year at Heroes Camp we're going back to the old church which is close to where I would normally go to for CTS or speech therapy, comprehensive therapy services, um, which I haven't done since this stupid thing started. And I was told that we were going back to the old church, which similar in, in 2018, I thought it was a shame that we're going back to the old church because when we tried new churches in 2017 and 2020, I actually liked those new churches because of less people, less rowdiness, and more concentration on what we're supposed to be doing. And I heard two people on the Heroes Church van or bus saying that they like it better when we're at the old church instead of new one, including one of those two that throughout this entire week has never given himself a silent moment. And I think ever since my first year, well, after it, I've been having to be groupmates with people who are, who are always talkative and and they just don't give themselves silent moments when they're supposed to have them. And that's it's probably one thing or problem or reason for why I'm not having a perfectly easy time. However, speaking of perfectly easy time, tomorrow will be exactly Five years since the last time I got that perfectly easy time that I wanted. And it all started with me watching a new episode of Booba that I've never seen before until that day called The High Wall. And The High Wall is one of my favorite episodes. It is awesome. And there are a few other episodes that I've seen that I know are awesome. Like, Space Rocket, Umbrella, Desert Island, Colored Bricks, Comfy Armchair, and many more that I know I've, that I know I've told you on one of my recent message videos. But ever since that day, it has not happened again. And I feel like that this elusive wait for a perfectly easy time has been going on for almost five years too long. And I want to be able to catch up. Still, I have only three weeks left this year. So there's plenty of time to see if it'll happen. Number two. Me used to having a Price is Right game. And Rick getting introduced to the Fremantle Media logo on this show. In the late 2000s, I used to have a Price is Right 
game. Um, and I remember doing well enough on it. Uh, I don't remember all of the pricing games I played on it, but I know I've played those that were in the game. And sometimes I did well on it, and sometimes I didn't. And the times that I didn't, those horns always show up. And, and I don't want to hear those horns, and nobody does. Although I do remember commenting that nobody wants to hear those horns, and whoever responded to me didn't take it very well. And I know they're not going to get rid of those horns, but I don't like them. And going back to Fremantle Media, I do remember seeing that show, and to the credit of Fremantle Media on that show, the music in that logo is calm and nice and lovely. However, I do remember seeing it on the Richard Karn version of Family Feud, where not only is the music there different, but immediately right after it, we got to see the Tribune Media logo, which is just, eh, to me, as well as me seeing the full version of it on a Card Sharks pilot back in 1996 or 7 or so, and that pilot didn't do so well. And, oh, and I, and the only time I can think of where I saw that logo that's not the production company for a game show is also a Canadian Disney series called My Babysitter's a Vampire, based on a based on a movie of the same title, My Babysitter's a Vampire was a Canadian series about two best friends who deal with this lady who is babysitting them and is also a vampire, or at least two be have believed in them. And I haven't seen that much of the show, but I know I've seen one episode of it where this doll magically appears to a real human, and she has this power of turning uh, of turning people who got next to her into dolls, so that she can take over the world. And it and it's all up to the little sister to see if she can turn this doll human back into a doll doll and these humans turn dolls back into human beings. Oh, and and that episode is called Guys and Dolls, which was the fourth episode ever of that show. And the only one I've, and the and the only episode that I remember seeing. But anyway, that's what I remember of Fremantle Media and it always showed up for every show on Buzzer, without the E. Number three. Rick showing Donnie Bajer the Blue's Clues Snack Time VHS on Google Meet. As well as Rhythm and Blue. Hey, two of my top three favorite Blue's Clues videos. Recently... Rick and Donnie appeared on Google Meet, and recently, uh, Rick got the Blue's Clues Snack Time VHS, and he showed it to Donnie. Yeah, he showed it to Donnie, and he liked it. And the same thing goes for the Rhythm and Blue VHS, which was my very first episode. And Donnie told Rick that my favorite Blue School's episode is Music in an Everyday Way, aka What Does Blue Want to Do on a Rainy Day, because of how musical it is. And I told him it's not just that, as well as something I didn't think of, Steve being funny <laughs> at 
at some moments in it, especially when he's pretending to be an opera singer. <laughs> yeah, I thought the opera singing was funny. But also, Steve having a great day in that episode, and in clues two and three, mostly three, he finds the clue before the viewers do in terms of speed, which has to do with being fast. And because of this, this makes it one of the rare times that the viewers made a mistake. And Steve uh, was lucky to find those clues really fast. Like, like, I know that clue number one was pot lids. Number two was a drum. And the third clue in, in the episode was a marching toy. And as Rick pointed out, Steve also had a great day in Blue's Big Mystical Movie where Steve found the third clue, the drawer, before the viewers did and before he even showed the the clue in the drawer to the viewers so that they can see it. So, while Rick has his Blue's Clues collection, is Blue's Clues videos collection increasing, and I'll get to more of why it's increasing later on. Donnie has a lot of videos, and he's he's currently uploading Blue's Clues video openings in his in uh, in one of his channels called Donnie. Blue's Clues VHS openings, or Donnie VHS openings, uh, however he calls it, and, yeah, those are good videos to show one friend, and I'll just leave it right there and say that when we come back from this break I will talk about things 4 and 5 and maybe further down if time can allow me to so we'll see what I talk about next after the break <laughs> 